Hey there, Parker Reed here, and welcome to Pete R Media, your home for everything movies and music, through my eyes. And today we have a review of the new film, Nomadland. Nomadland is a 2020 American neo-western drama film directed, written, edited, and produced by Chloe Zhao. It is based on the 2017 nonfiction book Nomadland, Surviving America in the 21st Century by Jessica Bruder, and stars Frances McDormand, who also produced the film, as a woman who leaves her small town to travel around the American West. So I've heard about Nomadland for like six months or more, but it just was delayed because of the whole COVID-19 pandemic. But suddenly, like yesterday, I saw my local theater in Eau Claire called Micon Cinemas. They said, hey, Nomadland is going to be at the theater this weekend. So I decided to hop out, go and see it because I've heard really astonishing things about this movie and I had a really good time with it. So before you go into Nomadland, just know that it's going to be a character study if ever there was one. For a lot of people, this might be perceived as slow or boring. So if you're not invested in this lead character, you're not going to enjoy this movie so you really just got to know that going in this isn't going to be some sprawling adventure movie it's very much a character study so the entire movie revolves around Frances McDormand's character whose husband passes away and she decides to live a nomad lifestyle which she doesn't have a home she lives in her van and goes from different camp to different place and just kind of sleeps in her car she doesn't feel like she belongs anywhere and she has a lot of repressed emotions that she doesn't want to deal with quite yet so she's moving around all these different places meeting all these different people and we're just along for the ride with her throughout this movie. The most positive aspect of Nomadland, I think, is just the fact that it has a lot of heart. For the first, like, hour or so, I thought, where is this going? We're not getting a lot of emotion out of this lead character. She feels sort of deadpan. But by the last third, last fourth of this movie, it really starts to tear at your heartstrings. You feel for her. You know where her head is at. And it really starts to show you just what this kind of lifestyle will do to somebody. And it shows you just how important other aspects of her life are to her, but she isn't willing to accept them quite yet. And it's really impressive when you look back to the backstory of this movie is Frances McDormand actually adopted this lifestyle for the duration of the filming of it so she could really feel what it was like and dig into that character. And she doesn't give the audience a lot to work with. You really need to read into her emotions and understand the subtext of what's going on with her in order for you to really feel for her character. And in terms of plot elements, there aren't a lot of big plot elements that go along. Sure, she has some interactions with people and there's a teased love interest in it. But besides that, there's no big like traditional act structure. There isn't the rise in act one and then the fall in two and then the rebirth in act three. There's nothing like that at all. You're just kind of going with it. And by the end of it, you feel like there is a little bit of hope for her character, but it doesn't end in a traditional way. And I won't give it away for people who haven't seen it before. It's just a very untraditional film. So the fact that people are starting to embrace it is really surprising to me. But Frances McDormand's an Oscar winner. I mean, three billboards outside of having Missouri. That's a phenomenal film. So obviously she's picking her projects right because I wouldn't say this movie is fun. It's interesting and anybody can put themselves into her shoes. They can feel what it would be like to live this lifestyle. It makes you rethink a lot of aspects of your life that maybe you took a little bit for granted aspects of your life, like just having a roof over your head. You don't think twice about over the course of a given day, but she doesn't have access to that. Or I don't even think she wants access to to it. So to understand that mentality and try to get into your headspace is really intriguing for me. And it gives you a lot of time to do that because sometimes the movie can drag a little bit just for the pure fact that it feels like a documentary a lot of the times. It feels like there's just a camera on this person going from stop to stop and then we're talking to her every once in a while and meeting people along the way. It feels like a documentary except there's just fictionalized characters in it. And I'm not embarrassed to say that I almost cried a couple of times toward the end. There's some words said after a long bouts of just inactivity as far as emotion goes from Frances McDormand's character. I'm like, oh my gosh, she finally got there. It's going to be nice. And then she reverts to her old ways. And there isn't that resolution that she wanted in this movie, but I don't think that's what it was going for. This is all about the experience. It's all about the journey. It's shot beautifully all throughout the West. And I would highly recommend you check it out if you get the chance. So my final rating for Nomadland is a solid... 9 out of 10. If we would have thrown in some cheesier plot elements, maybe it would have been a 9.5 or a 10. But the fact that it did drag a little bit sometimes is the only reason this isn't getting a 10. It's a very good film. It shines a light on a subculture that we don't really understand and we often judge without knowing the full story. There's a lot of pain in these nomads and there's a lot of pain in this culture. And if we embrace them a little bit, try to get in their headspace a little bit, I think we'd all be better served for it. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like what you saw here, you can check us out on Facebook or Instagram and like comment, and subscribe if you so choose. My name is Parker Reed. You've been watching Pete R Media. Keep supporting physical media, and I'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. One of the things I love most about this life is that there's no final goodbye. I've met hundreds of people out here. 
and I don't ever say a final goodbye. Let's just say, I'll, I'll see you down the road. And I do. I see them again. And I can be certain in my heart, I'll see you again.